that this is solving by square roots. Now, I put these, these are up on the board, but they're also on the paper here. These are just a list of perfect squares. And what I have at the beginning, I'm hoping is review for you guys, but um, I want to make sure you know how to do it. A couple of the questions are going to say, leave your answer in simplest radical form. So I want to make sure you guys remember how to break down a radical just real quick here at the top. And then some of the questions you'll need to use this for, some of them not. But I want to make sure you do know how to put something in simplest radical form. I broke my pencil here. Okay, we just won't use that. All right. Did you guys do like factor tree or how did you break down a radical? The tree. Okay. So here's the deal. The easiest thing I can tell you to do, you're looking for pairs. And there's kind of, I don't want to say there's rules for using a factor tree, but you're supposed to break it down into prime numbers. You really don't have to do that, though. You really want to try your best to break it down just so you can get pairs. So what I would tell you to do, if you can think of a number on this list of perfect squares that would divide into that number and, and make your factor tree with that, it would make it go so much faster. So if you're looking at your perfect squares, does anybody know any perfect square that would go into 48? Like if I'm just trying, I'm trying to think of two things, multiply to give me 48. If one of them could be on that list though, it would make it way faster to do this problem. 16, okay, 16 times what? 16 times three. So what? two numbers multiply to give you 16. Four and four, that's what I'm looking for. If you can grab a number on that list, you automatically have a pair and that goes out in front. So I broke down the 48, I broke down the 16. I have a pair, like don't keep going, don't keep going like two and two, don't do that. Just, I've got a pair right there. If you have a pair, that comes out in front and anything that doesn't have a partner, like the three here in this question, just stays under the square root. So if you can find yourself a perfect square that divides into that number, it can just make the factor tree go way faster. Can anybody tell me a number on this list that might go into 72 that's a perfect square? Nine definitely does. If, there, if nine goes into it, just see if there's any number that's bigger than that. 36, okay. Now, the only reason I say that to you, here's 36, here's two. So 36 is a perfect square. So the two factors for 36, six and six, I got the pair. If you can get the biggest number on that list that'll divide into whatever you got under your radical, it'll just make the factor tree go so much faster. So pair of sixes, the two did not have a partner. So the two's gonna stay under the square root. What about 98? It's gotta be divisible by two, right? Because it's even. 49, yeah, yeah, okay. So two and 49 give you 98. Now, 49's on that list. Partners for 49 would be seven and seven. So that is a pair that comes out in front and the two doesn't have a partner, stays underneath. You don't have to full on do a, a factor tree that has all prime numbers or anything like that. You can actually just break it down. You're just trying to get a pair, that's the goal. So what number on that list do you think goes into 125? 25, right? All right, so I would rewrite this. This is 25 times 5. And then 25 is a perfect square. So two factors of 25, there's your pair, 5 and 5, and not to be confusing, but I'm going to have one of the 5s out in front, and this third 5 didn't have a partner, so that would stay underneath. That would be simplest radical form. Okay, what about 80? Can you think of two numbers that I'll multiply to give you 80? 40 and two, right? It doesn't have to be a perfect square. There's different ways you could make this. And what would be some factors of 40? Five and eight. All right, and if I can keep, I'm gonna keep breaking this down. Eight would be four and two. And then I can keep going a little bit farther. So this is a little bit bigger tree, two and two. All right, now let's, let me see what I got here. And you don't have to do this, but I try to cross off any number that I broke down so I don't actually get that confused. I'm looking for pairs. So I have a pair of twos here. I have a different pair of twos here. And then I had this five that doesn't have a partner. So if you have 
more than one pair, you're going to multiply those numbers together. So I can pull out a 2 and another 2, so that would come out as a 4, and then the 5 would be left underneath. Like, just, just as a little tiny example, like another way, if I, I could have done like 16 and 5, that's another way I could break down 80. And then the 16 would be the 4 and the 4. Just another option. If you can find a perfect square, it just makes the tree a lot smaller. What about 128? Could anybody tell me if that's divisible by a perfect square? 64 and 2, for sure. So 64 and 2, that'll give you 128. And then we want the 64 because that can just break down to 8 and 8. That's your square root, so that's just your pair right there. And then don't keep going. Just that's what you that's what you want. You want a pair. So the eight would be out in front. The two would be left underneath. You can do a full on if you want to do like all the prime factors with the tree. That's completely fine. But I'm just recommending if you can find a number on this list that'll go into that. It'll make it so much faster. A little bit smaller tree. Now you won't have to use this on every question. I just wanted to give you guys a little review. It's on a couple of the problems today, but. They're going to ask you to leave these in radical form if they're not perfect squares. So we're just going to start here. We're going to solve all these equations today just using square roots. This is going to happen anytime, or you can use this if you have no b times x or linear terms. So I'm thinking like ax squared plus bx plus c. What you'll notice in all these equations today, you'll have an x squared, but you won't have a term that just has a plain x. So what you can actually do, these are a little bit faster than what we've been working with. You don't have to factor or anything. We're just going to get the x squared by itself, just like we would a normal variable, just solve a normal equation. That's literally it. Just get the x squared alone. So for this first one, I would subtract 2. So I'd have the 3x squared equals 21. All my writing utensils are just dying on me today. And don't do anything to get rid of the squared until you get the x squared totally alone. So I'm going to divide by 3. Now for this question, 21 divided by 3 is 7. And so that's a nice number. Does anybody remember how to get rid of the squared in an equation? Square root. Okay, now if you introduce the square root into the problem, it's not already in the problem when we started it. There was no radical. If you introduce that square root into the problem, does anybody know what you have to put in front of it? Okay, I'm just going to show you real quick. It's, this has two answers. It could be the positive square root of 7, or it could be the negative square root of 7. So whenever you introduce a radical, that symbol plus and minus, it's actually a little shorthand way to give you two answers at once. Let me write this out just so you guys can see it. So really this means my answers are the square root of 7 and negative square root of 7. It's actually two different answers, just a little shorthand way of writing it. Okay, I want to show you just on this question only, just a little quick, how this is related to the graph, which is what we were doing on Friday. Maybe I want to show you. I don't know. Okay, so if I had the 3x squared plus 2 equals 23, let's say I wanted to do what we did last week and graph this. So I'm just going to set it equal to 0 real quick, and then I've already got this pulled up on Desmos so you guys can look at it. If I set that equal to 0, I'd have 3x squared minus 21 equals 0. If I wanted to graph this to solve it, we would just put 0, or sorry, y in place of the 0. Okay, I'm just going to write over, I, I actually put this on my Desmos here real quick so you guys can see it. So I just graphed that same thing. And to show you, these are not nice answers on the Desmos. It won't put it in radical form. But you got negative 2.646 and positive 2.646. All right, so two answers here. I'm just going to show you on my calculator. Just remember that 2.646. If you actually take the square root of 7 and just put it in your calculator, their Desmos is rounding that answer. That's the 2.646. They're just rounding it to three decimal places. But that's the two spots on the calculator. We're just writing an exact answer when I give, keep the radical there. I'm not rounding anything. So those are what we call exact answers when you have the radical form. But that's why you got two answers there, those two places that graph cross the x-axis. Is anybody having a question? Okay. 
Now, the rest, I'm not going to do that with the rest of these. We're just going to go through all. So you just want to get the x squared by itself because you can't. You don't have a term with an x. So like on this guy, I'm going to get rid of any addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to add the 25. Get 4x squared equals 25. Don't take the square root until you get the x squared by itself. So I'm going to divide by 4 first. And if I did this as a decimal, it'd be 6.25. Does anybody know why I'm going to leave that as a fraction? Because, yes, I'm going to square root it, but why is that convenient here? They're both perfect squares. Like 25 and 4 are both on this list. Okay, so if you have a fraction, if it, I didn't get a nice, you know, plain number when I did that, you just take the square root of the top and bottom separate. Now, don't forget, because I, I just forgot to write it, plus and minus, because we introduced the square root, but like just on the top, square root of 25 is 5, square root of 4 is 2. So those are my two answers, positive 5 over 2 and negative 5 over 2. All you got to do. So if you see something like that, or if you see numbers on this list, that's probably what's going on. All right, now, the, the next one, you're going to have to use the little skills we did at the very beginning. So I'm going to add 64. So we'll get 2x squared is equal to 64. And then trying to get the x squared by itself, and then we can get rid of the squared by taking the square root. But before I do that, i got to divide both sides by 2. So I'm going to end up with x squared is equal to 32. And not similar to the last one. That's not a perfect square. Not similar to the first one because 7 doesn't break down. But 32 does break down under a square root. So I'm going to get my square root here. Don't forget your plus or minus symbol. Okay, can anybody tell me, if you're looking at that list of perfect squares, can anybody tell me the biggest perfect square that would divide into 32, just to help me make a small factor tree? 16. This is 16 times 2, and then the 16, there's your pair right there, 4 and 4. That comes out in front, we'd have the 2 left underneath. So this would be plus or minus 4 roots of 2 in simplest radical form. And I got one more. We're going to do this one real quick. So tomorrow this will be a different answer, but I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. I'm just going to try and get the x squared by itself. And if you guys try to do this on your calculator, you can't take the square root of a negative number. It will literally, I'm going to show you on my calculator here. If I do square root of negative 9, it literally gives you an error. And that would be any, like, graphing, scientific, whatever. It can't do it. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. So if you end up with that for any of these questions, this is just going to be no real solution. It does have an imaginary solution, but we haven't talked about that yet. So if you end up taking a square root of a negative today on any of your homework assignments, it does not have a real answer. Is anybody having a question? This is not terrible. Um, and the next two problems are just a little bit more complicated version of this, but I promise they're not bad either. So what I have up here, and this is really important. So we spend a lot of time working on multiplying stuff like this out. Right? We did, like, put it in standard form, whatever, with this, and we worked through the algebra with this. I have to have you guys remember this on these two questions. If you have an equation that you are trying to solve, do not FOIL this. You want those parentheses. That will make this so much easier to solve. You can actually get rid of the parentheses by taking the square root. You just have to get them by themselves first. But do not FOIL. You're just going to make the problem way harder than it is. What you want to do, just treat that like a big variable. I'm going to get that alone. So undo any addition or subtraction first. So I've got this plus 6 to the side here. So I'm just going to real quick subtract the 6. And I'm just going to try to get this x minus 2 squared in parentheses, just trying to get that alone on one side. Don't foil this. That'll just make the problem harder. So if I'm there, don't distribute the 3 because I would have to do my squared first, and we're not going to FOIL. So what you want to do, don't distribute. You want to divide by the 3. And that's going to actually give you this little set of parentheses, x minus 2 squared isolated, which is what we want. We want that by itself. And then 48 divided by 3. 
is 16. Here's all you're going to do. You can, without foiling, just cancel this whole thing out by taking a square root. If it's in parentheses by itself, just square root and squared cancel each other out. The main difference here, when you take the square root, you just have that expression. You have x minus 2. So that whole thing stays, but you just drop the parentheses. Now, you've got to put the plus and minus still. So I have this 16. So square root of 16 is 4. So that would be plus or minus 4. Now, this is a little bit weird because I don't have x alone. So I just have to do another little bit. I'm going to move this 2 away from the x by adding it to the other side. Now, here's my best advice to you. Just put that number, whatever that is, you might add or subtract. In this case, I'm going to add. Just put that directly after that equal sign. So I have 2, and then plus or minus 4. All right, now, depends on the question, but on this, you can actually add these, right? I can do 2 plus 4, right? 2 plus 4 is 6. That's one of my answers. I can also do 2 minus 4, 2 minus 4, is just negative 2. So that's how I'm going to get my two answers there. If that, if that has a radical attached to that, like if that was 4 radical 5 or something, then you just leave it alone. But if it's a plain number, you can actually add them or subtract them. And I have one more, and then we'll do a little word problem down at the bottom. So again, if you see the parentheses, don't FOIL. You want those parentheses, because you can get rid of them just by taking the square root. But you have to get them alone first. So if I have this 2 out in front, I'm just going to take one step. I'm just going to divide both sides by 2. So then I'm going to get 4x plus 3. That's squared. And 128 divided by 2, actually a nice perfect square. That's 64. Don't FOIL. We're just going to get rid of that in one step by taking the square root of both sides. So we're going to end up with 4x plus 3, and then don't forget, you introduced the square root, so you put a plus minus. So square root of 64 is 8. All right, now, this one is a little bit more complicated than the one we just did, but I'm going to do kind of the same thing. I'm going to subtract the 3, trying to get x alone here. I'm going to write that right after the equal sign. So I'm going to write negative 3 plus or minus 8, and then we're going to divide the entire thing by 4. So, here's what I would have. I'd have negative 3 plus 8 divided by 4, or I would have negative 3 minus 8 divided by 4. And please do not go, oh, 8 divided by 4 is 2. No. Okay, you have to get the top by itself first and then divide by 4. So, on this first one I wrote down, negative 3 plus 8 would be 5 over 4. And then you can't do anything else there. You can't just go, oh, 8 and 4. Don't do that because that's not right. Simplify the top first. So on the other one, negative 3 minus 8, negative 11 over 4. And those are just my two answers. They don't reduce. So simplify the numerator first and then put it over whatever's in your denominator. Is anyone having a question? Okay. Now our day would not be complete without a word problem, of course. So, this is, yeah, this is, actually. <laughs> um, and I do want to ask you guys a quick question. You can use this, sol or you can solve this today using square roots, but I just want to remind you real quick, the original formula when I first gave these guys to you was negative 16 t squared. The negative 16 is the force of gravity, and then I had plus vt, so velocity of the object multiplied by the time, and then plus c, which is the initial height. Now, you'll notice this says this function, h equals negative 16 t squared plus 270, models the height, so h is for height, in feet of an object t seconds after it's dropped from the top of a building that's 270. So the initial height, the 270, that would be in place of the c in that formula. Does anybody know why I don't have a middle term here? Like, why don't I have, like, a velocity multiplied by time for the question? you may know. We're, we're going to have this object go off of the top of a building. Why don't I have a velocity? Like, why doesn't the object have a speed? Tell me. Why is it zero? You're right. 
Exactly. You're not throwing it. You're just like holding it and dropping it. If I was throwing it, then it would have a velocity. Then we couldn't use square roots because we'd have a term that had a T in it also. So since I'm just dropping it, there's no velocity. It's not being launched. It's not being thrown. So no velocity. So that's why you don't see that. That term doesn't exist here if you just drop something. Okay, anyway. Now, it says after how many seconds? So ultimately, I'm asking you for a time here. After how many seconds will the object be 206 feet off the ground? How would I figure this out? So you don't have to draw a picture. I'm just going to sketch a tiny picture. So I'm going to drop this object. This is not to scale, I'm sure. So it's going to start at 270, and the force of gravity is going to pull it down to the ground. So this would be time across the bottom here. This would be your height. So somewhere on the way down, I don't know, I'm just estimating. Let's say this was the 206. I want to find the time that corresponds to that. Like, how would I figure that out? I just made that look so much more complicated than it is. Exactly, exactly. They're telling you the height they want it to be. You're just going to put in 206 for the height. All right, now, this is nice for us because, again, we don't have a velocity, so we don't have a plane term that has a T, so we don't have to worry about that. We can just get the time squared by itself. Two steps, you're just going to subtract the 270. And don't worry if this gives you a negative number. It should. This would be negative 64 equals negative 16 T squared. Now, what's going to happen when I get the T squared by itself? Do that before you try to take any square roots. Divide by negative 16 here. This is going to leave you with positive 4. Those two negatives will cancel each other out. Equals T squared. And then we're just going to take square root. And this answer will be a nice number. Now, does anybody know why I'm not going to put a plus and minus for my answer? Can't have negative time. All right, so no plus minus and reason is... We couldn't have like negative two seconds. That's what it would be. So we can't have negative time. So algebraically, if we didn't have a situation attached to this, it'd be plus or minus two. Because we have a situation attached to this, it's just positive two seconds would be my time. That's going to be my answer there. And then I same, same equation, but I have a different question for you. So my different question says, after how many seconds, I can't speak, how many seconds will the object hit the ground? So if you guys are looking at my little graph, the time would be corresponding to like my little sketch there would be that point right there. What's your height if you're on the ground? Zero. So that's all you're going to do. Anytime you have a question asks you about the ground, all it means is plug in zero for the height. So for the equation we have, we would just have zero equals negative 16 t squared plus 270. So basically you're trying to figure out how long does it take for this to drop off the building and cover that 270 feet, which is how tall the building is. Now, this question is not going to ask you to leave it in radical form. This actually says round to the nearest hundredth of a second. If you see something like that in the directions, it's trying to get you to use your calculator to solve this. So if you guys don't have one out, I'll just do it up here on mine, but you're going to subtract 270 and you're going to get negative 270 equals negative 16 t squared. This is not a nice number when you divide it. So negative 270 divided by negative 16. It becomes positive because the two negatives cancel each other out, but you get like 16.875. And I'm just, I just wrote out the whole decimal that you get if you take 270 divided by 16. Now, again, don't no plus and minus here because you can't have a negative time. But I'm just going to take the square root of this on my calculator, just that second, and I should have said this to you guys at the beginning, sorry. If you're not sure where the square root button's on is on the graphing calculator, you have to hit second, and then it's just the second function on this button that's got the little x squared that's diagonal from your 7 key. So to get your square root there, and then I'm just going to type in that 16.875. So... Time here, uh, let me say approximately equal to since I'm rounding it. And it says it wants it to the nearest hundredth, so two decimal places. So this would be about 4.11 seconds until that comes back down. Whatever the object is, they don't even tell us, but it would come back down to the ground about 4.11 seconds.
Is anybody having a question?